This is a galaxy-wide transmission of the United Federation of Planets. Welcome back to Continuum Meditations Discusses. In a previous video, we talked about the repercussions of the Star Trek Axanar lawsuit settlement between CBS Studios and Paramount Pictures and the Axanar Productions Film Group. In that video, I shared with you the rules, or guidelines as they are called by CBS and Paramount, that were handed down by CBS in the wake of that settlement. I shared with you my understanding of those rules both as they were stated on paper and how, in the case of at least some of the guidelines, loosely binding language could leave these rules open for unchecked expansion of authority by CBS and Paramount in the future. I advise the Star Trek community to stand up to these rules and to not allow them to become strengthened by exercise and entangled in precedent, but instead to detect the potential for abuse that CBS and Paramount are reaching for through these guidelines and to avoid such abuse by denying the principles upon which the guidelines are based. I now want to talk to you about solutions, because I believe the flames of passion must have an outlet that can transform such raw, unbridled energy into constructive action. So while drawing attention to the potential problems of the guidelines in the first video, and beginning a discussion that I thought was sorely missing in the wake of the Axanar settlement, it is now my intention to point out ways that Star Trek fans can positively channel indignation over CBS and Paramount's actions into avenues that can, ultimately, become beneficiary to the Star Trek fan film and Star Trek fan communities as a whole. So, let's get into solutions. Solution number one. Create your own videos exposing the problem. As stated earlier, I set out to shed light on what I deemed to be an understated problem to fill a vacuum of understanding on a subject that I believed was not being fully exposed nor its implications fully explored by some of the major articles that have been written nor some of the major internet personalities and Star Trek fan groups who have discussed the issue. And in the doing I sought to provoke awareness and yes outrage over these rules. I sought to spur you to action so that these rules do not become cemented into formal objective policy by CBS and Paramount Pictures over a long period of Star Trek filmmakers simply making a good faith effort to comply with the rules in order to keep peace with the major studios so that they can continue their own productions. Solution number two. Tweet, blog, and post about the guidelines. There will be greater understanding when the Trek community as a whole is unified in its efforts to expose these guidelines for what they are, a power grab by CBS and Paramount Pictures. My advice to you is that when discussing these rules in your own videos, blogs, and podcasts, etc., is to directly quote and post them in addition to providing the source for others to find and read these rules for themselves. Solution number three, boycott Star Trek Discovery, boycott CBS All Access. I'm expanding this tactic to mean not simply avoiding the new Star Trek show coming out, <laughs> God knows when it's coming out, but, or even the CBS All Access Network itself that it will be offered upon. I'm also talking about boycotting Paramount Pictures and other CBS television and film programs as well. If there's a Paramount Pictures movie you know that is coming out soon, don't go see it in the theaters. Don't rent it on Netflix, don't buy the Blu-ray DVD. Withhold all support and encourage others to do the same. This not only applies to Star Trek material, but other TV and movie programs you pay for as well. Solution number four, perhaps one of the best solutions that we can enact out of the list that I'm giving you now. Solution number four is to solicit Star Trek actors' response to the guidelines. Get Star Trek actors to speak out about the rules and to offer their opinions in public. Now this could be anything from inviting them to speak out on podcasts, to writing articles of their own for publication, to publishing their own videos on YouTube, to being interviewed on radio programs and other internet chats, to speaking at science fiction conventions, to writing open letters for inclusion in sci-fi fan club circulars, and beyond. In particular, you should get Star Trek actors who have worked on fan film projects in the past to speak out about the rules and publicly offer their support and sponsorship of independent Star Trek fan films. Such actors include Walter Koenig, Garrett Wong, Tim Russ, J.G. Hertzler, Nichelle Nichols, Ethan Phillips, 
Tony Todd, and several others. Star Trek actors can be contacted on their Twitter feeds, their Facebook pages, their personal websites, at science fiction conventions, through their agents, through media contacts, etc. And you know, while we're on the subject of Star Trek actors, let me draw attention once again to a provision contained in the CBS Paramount rules, because I think this points to the level of audacity that CBS and Paramount are reaching for with these guidelines. As I stated to you in my first video on the subject, I read the rules to you verbatim, and I put the rules uh, up for you on screen so that you could read them for yourselves, and I also provided a link where you could go and see the rules as they were originally written by CBS and Paramount Pictures. I want to quote from that rule, one of those rules again. Rule number five says that the fan production must be a real fan, quote-unquote, fan production, i.e. creators, actors, and all other participants must be amateurs, cannot be compensated for their services, and cannot be currently or previously employed on any Star Trek series, films, production of DVDs, or with any of CBS or Paramount Pictures licensees. Now I want to be clear about something. I want to talk about a specific provision in that, in that, uh, in that rule or guideline, as they call them. And that is this. It states that the fan production cannot be currently, uh, it states that uh, participants must be amateurs and that they cannot be currently or previously employed on any Star Trek series, films, production of DVDs, or with any of CBS or Paramount Pictures licensees. The final clause, the final two clauses of that rule are what I want to talk about. And I want to be clear about something. Unless an actor has an existing binding or exclusivity clause in their contract with an existing studio or film company, there is no film company on earth that can tell that actor who they can or cannot work with. Now, this means that CBS and Paramount Pictures have no right under the sun to dare demand that independent Star Trek fan films cannot hire or attempt to hire professional actors, Star Trek or non-Star Trek, for their films. Now this also applies to other professionals such as camera crews, makeup personnel, post-production editors, and anyone else whom you can afford or who chooses to volunteer their services for your production. Now I wanted to point that out and make that plain as the day is long because I wanted you to understand and see clearly the brazenness and the flagrant capacities for abuse that these rules are actually asking you to accept on their face value so that you understand exactly what we're dealing with here and why these rules, if they are followed by the Star Trek fan film community, are so dangerous to the future of independent Star Trek fan film. Now let's get back to solutions having said that. Solution number five follows on the heels of what I just said. Fan filmmakers resist. Do not comply with these rules. And here I'm speaking directly to fan film content creators. CBS and Paramount have no authority whatsoever to tell you who you can work with, how much money you can raise, what kinds of props and uniforms you can use, or how long your films can be. As I stated before in the comments section of the previous video on the Axanar settlement, I believe what CBS and Paramount are seeking is voluntary compliance that they can later use as a means of establishing precedent that can be transformed into actual actionable enforcement later that a court of law will accept. Now this, in my opinion, is a long-range objective. And the more you comply now in whole or in part with these rules, the greater their case will be in the future for enforcing the validity of the guidelines as a complete continuum as we go down the line. So my advice to you again is do not bow down to these rules. Do not comply with them. Resistance is not futile. Solution number six, involve the legal community in a process of discovery concerning the legality of the guidelines. A talented legal mind can call into question, based on current existing law, whether CBS and Paramount have legal standing to enforce these so-called guidelines or not. And they can help fan filmmakers break down these rules, parsing them for that language which is strictly legally binding, loosely legally binding, non-legally binding, and that language which is based on mere bluff and the intimidation of two giant corporations trying to throw their weight around like bullies. 
a process of discovery leading to what is and is not enforceable by Paramount and CBS could lead to a class action lawsuit against these corporations should they decide to try and later enforce the rules or sue individual or collective filmmakers who allegedly violate them. Solution number seven. Start a letter writing campaign to smaller private film studios exposing the guidelines. Do you know of other independent film groups who make their own films, Star Trek or otherwise? Send them these guidelines to show them how their association or potential association with CBS and Paramount Pictures could be jeopardized by the application of these edicts upon their own projects. Remember, the rules, while they principally apply to Star Trek, are open-ended enough to eventually be applied to any Paramount or CBS licensee chosen, as stated in Rule Number 5, which I again quote for you, that says, the fan production must be a real fan production. Creators, actors, and all other participants must be amateurs, cannot be compensated for their services, and cannot be currently or previously employed on any Star Trek series, films, production of DVDs, or with any of CBS or Paramount Pictures licensees. Now this simply means that anyone that you may choose to work with in the future, with anyone who is licensed with CBS or Paramount Pictures, you could possibly be sued or taken to some type of, uh, under, undertaken with some type of legal action against you if CBS or Paramount Pictures chooses to do so. This is how open-ended these so-called rules or guidelines are. And this is why they are so dangerous to the, to the freedom of Star Trek and other independent filmmakers should CBS or Paramount Pictures choose not only to enforce them against Star Trek but to expand them against other independent filmmakers. So don't believe that if Paramount Pictures and CBS are successful here with Star Trek independent filmmakers that this has to stop with Star Trek alone. Now any one of these solutions by themselves may or may not get CBS or Paramount Pictures notice, but in tandem or in combination, they can raise not only awareness, but the fighting spirit of the Star Trek community, which it is my express purpose to arouse. These seven solutions are not the only potential answers to this extraordinary challenge, nor the only means to confront the crisis that Paramount Pictures and CBS have placed before us. There are many other creative ways to become involved in fighting back against this overreach, and of the seven solutions placed before you, at least six of them can be accomplished by anyone, anywhere, on the face of the planet. I will conclude by saying, fellow Star Trek fans, I encourage you to not be complacent in recognizing nor hitting back against these rules and what their implications could mean for the future of Star Trek fan films and beyond. Get organized to fight back now and fight to win. Become involved as a puller at the oars, not simply as a passenger in the boat. Continue a dialogue on this subject that brings greater exposure to the problem at hand and join with others in finding even more effective solutions that will nix this matter in the bud. Speak up and speak out so that Paramount and CBS know that we will not simply go quietly and bow down to an overbearing hand that wishes to control and dominate us without challenge. Perhaps one of the first things you can do after viewing this video is to begin planning, filming, and publishing your own considered reactions to the new fan film rules so that others can become similarly exposed to their implications. But this has been another discussion by Continuum Meditations. And until next time, Star Trek fans, live long and prosper.